hi guys welcome or welcome back to my channel i feel like i've turned into a book like a booktube a book channel i'm trying not to throw out too many book videos but i asked you guys if you wanted to see this video and a lot of you said yes it was like way over majority said yes so i'm so excited because all of these books as you saw from the title are books that you've most definitely seen on book talk if you're scrolling through and people are recommending books to you like these ones are probably on the list and they're ones that I've read, I've rated, I have my thoughts over and we're gonna go through them and I'm gonna tell you guys like a basic little synopsis and then what I rated it, if I think it's hyped or not, if I think it's worth the hype and just if I enjoyed it or not and I feel like this is gonna be fun. I really like doing these book videos, honestly I didn't think anyone would enjoy my book videos because I don't post that, I do like vlogs and lifestyle. If you don't know if you're new here that's usually what I do. So this is gonna be fun. I am very much enjoying these book videos and there will definitely be more but for now we're doing book talk and these are the ones that i've seen i've read and we're gonna go through them before i start i just want to shout out this little t-shirt that i'm wearing and the company that it came from they sent a few to me and they are so cute if you're into like angel numbers zodiac and like trendy little t-shirts and sweatshirts and totes and like really cute stuff this is for you so the company is called enlightened soul co this has a little angel on the front that says angel Angel energy and it's so cute it's kind of like a brown little coloring which I love and then the back has little angel wings on the top of it in the same color it's so cute I got mine in an XL so it's super long these are my favorite you guys know oversized tees to wear to like the beach and stuff but I'm gonna leave all of her information down in the description her Instagram whatever so you guys can shop if you're into this kind of stuff definitely check it out but we're gonna get right into it on my phone I wrote a list of the books that I'm gonna be talking about so I just want to go back into it I right, wait before we get started I want to just say that I want to do a reading vlog like i'm gonna read a book a popular one that i haven't read yet and i'm gonna post on my instagram story a poll or kind of just like choosing or like a quiz of what book you guys would want me to read for the reading vlog and i'm gonna at the end of this video let you guys know what books i am deciding between I feel like that'd be fun so just wait to the end and i have a few like really popular books that i haven't read yet so i have a bunch of paperbacks here with me and then the rest are on my kindle let me go get my kindle we're gonna start with i don't know we're gonna end with all of the colleen hoover books i read because there's a few that I want to talk about and we're gonna end with those obviously Colleen is huge on TikTok everyone's shouting her out and I feel like I'm a Colleen stan account at this point like her books are everything to me but we're gonna end with that because I have quite a few from her we're gonna start with these two contemporary romances that are pretty popular if you haven't seen them I don't know I feel like everyone has if you haven't read them you've definitely seen them they're both by Emily Henry I read this one last summer before I feel like it got it's kind of hype and it's name out there but it's called Beat Read by Emily Henry it's contemporary romance basically is about two writers january and augustus they have two i think it's a lake house i'm pretty sure they're on a lake but next to each other it's only two houses january goes there because it's her father's house and he was having kind of like an affair and that's where they went so she's trying to like clear it out she doesn't want to stay there but she sees that augustus is next door they were like rivals back in the day because they're both writers she writes romance he writes like science fiction literary fiction something like that two different genres so they meet up again and they make up this plan that by the end of the summer they're going to switch genres and they're gonna see if they can write in each other's genres because they're both kind of in like a writing block. So that's what they do. She takes him on like romance-y kind of adventures and he takes her on like different kind of adventures just to kind of get in the feel of the genre that they're trying to write. It's Enemies to Lovers, my favorite to read ever. And it's very good. I love her writing so much. This one is what kind of got me into loving contemporary romance books and like Enemies to Lovers. Like this is just written so well. I loved the ending of this. I love these characters. It's amazing. Highly, highly recommend. I think I rated this a four out of five. I might have rated it a five out of five. I don't really remember I read this last year, but so good. Highly recommend. And then we have People We Meet on Vacation by her. This one's going around like a lot now. I read this a few months ago. I loved this book. Not as much as I loved Beach Read. I love Beach Read so much more, but this one's definitely good. This is about Poppy and Alex. Poppy's more outgoing. Alex's more like reserved, quiet. They met in college. They just instantly became best friends. So it kind of flashbacks to them and their growing best friend relationship back in the day. And then it goes back to present time where they're older. She's like a travel blogger. That they're no longer friends and you don't know why when they became friends back in the day They went on vacations every year together It was just like a their friend trips and what they did At present time She's trying to get them to rekindle their friendship So she plans a trip a vacation and she invites him and kind of have this awkwardness between them and you don't know why Eventually you figure it out I think I rated this a three and a half out of five could have been a four out of five because I loved their Character and the relationship and the way it grew but the point where you get to why they're not friends anymore I feel like it could have been way more dramatic and way more. I don't know. I feel like it wasn't as crazy for them not to be speaking anymore i think it was too drawn 
drawn out so that part wasn't my favorite but still the relationship the writing like everything about this i loved it was just that one little part that i was like okay this wasn't it was too hyped up that part but the book definitely so good another great contemporary romance staying in this genre we have the unhoneymooners by christina lauren now this is the first book by her that i read i do want to read another one i have on my list that we'll talk about later but this one is definitely a bigger one a thicker one i will say i loved the writing in this one like i read it really quick being that it's such a long book but i rated it a three out of five this book is about olive and ethan olive's sister is marrying ethan's brother they're just not friends they're kind of like enemies from the get-go like right when they met they just didn't get along they hated each other and at the wedding everyone gets sick so the honeymoon is all expenses paid like you can't miss it her sister and his brother give it to them to go on because they're the only two that didn't get sick and they're like absolutely not we're not going on this together like i'm not doing a 10 day i think it's 10 day maybe a week vacation with each other they're very much against it but obviously they went on the vacation i absolutely loved their kind of like banter it was really funny their relationship and like the enemies to lovers and like the tension and like growing to that i really did like it was just weird though because it kind of like switched to a whole different plot the last like a hundred ish pages it switched to kind of like what the sister was going through which i didn't like i wish to just focus on their relationship their honeymoon what was going on with them and that's it but i don't know not my favorite storyline by the end of it but such a good read amazing writing i actually really liked this but i did rate it a three out of five i would recommend it though if you like contemporary romances i wouldn't be the first one to pick this up i feel like beach read go for that one if you want to start with contemporary romances and get into it but this is definitely keep this on your list it's definitely a good book so switching genres real quick to The Silent Patient. I feel like this is goes around. I see it a lot when people are recommending books on book talk, especially if you want like a psychological thriller or in that kind of genre, which I definitely wanted to throw that in here, not just all contemporary romances. This is about a woman named Alicia who one day just shoots her husband in the head and then never speaks again. She doesn't speak about it. Like it literally nothing. She just shuts down. So she's in a psychiatric unit and then this guy named Theo, psychotherapist, goes into the unit and he's like, I'm going to get into her. I'm going to get into her head. I'm going to make her talk. And everyone there is like, you're crazy. Like she doesn't speak. But he basically goes through out what happened before she shot him and goes through her life the people in her life and stuff like that i rated this a three out of five what i didn't love is there was a few like minor characters that obviously pop up like for example i'm not gonna spoil it but for example the brother-in-law like something happens with him and then it never gets resolved like it's definitely brought up and it's an issue but it never gets resolved it's kind of like pushed to the back which is kind of annoying like i wish that was figured out and then that happened like a few times with a few people but other than that when the twist and that part came that you were waiting for at the end of it so worth it i said in my last video when i talked about this i literally had to go back and reread it and you kind of just rethink the what 200 300 pages that you read before that part came and you're just like completely just in shock this is definitely one of the psychological thrillers that i read that are up on the list not my favorite one but definitely worth it when you get to that twist in that part but definitely a good one i understand why it's Typed. So we're doing all the paperbacks first so you couldn't tell and then we're gonna get to the Kindle books But next is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. So I read this right after Beach Read. I read this pretty quick I gave this a 2 out of 5. I don't think this should be as hyped as it is The thing is when you have a book that's so hyped and people are telling you you're gonna cry at the end and all this stuff Your expectations are way too high and you're like when am I gonna cry and it just never really comes That happens to me very often so I have to try to go in with no expectations This one though I went in with very high expectations and I left with the worst Like I actually hated this book. The way it was written and I feel like it's for people in kind of like middle school, maybe even younger. I feel like the characters weren't developed clearly. The plot and the storyline wasn't developed as clear as it probably could have. It needed more description and more just a better rounded everything. So I don't even know how to explain what it's about, but basically it's like this richer family who has a private island and they go spend their summers there, a bunch of houses, and you kind of go through the main character and she has like the four, it's the four of them, they're friends, they like do stuff together and then all of her family members are just really sus, like they just don't they're kind of making her seem like like crazy because she has this memory that she can't really recall but like things are reminding her of it and it's really weird and i feel like when the part at the end came when you figure it out people are like crying and i'm just like i literally felt nothing i think this shouldn't be as hyped as it is there's so many other good books that have the same kind of like feel and setting and stuff like that i just don't think this is worth it at all i don't think you should read this i hated it that's my thoughts on this one so i have one more paperback but it's colleen hoover but we're gonna do her at the end so we're gonna do books that are on my kindle that i I read 
that I read, that I read. First one that I'm gonna talk about is a series, the Selection series. This one's really popular. I always see this everywhere. It was the first kind of dystopian and also the first trilogy that I read. I mean, I know it's not a trilogy, but I read three of them. I didn't read the other ones because it was told in a different point of view. It's definitely written, not childishly, it's just more young adult, I would say. But one of my favorite books, trilogies, whatever, series, I loved it so much. I think I rated them all, all three of them, a four out of five. I read them so quick. They were just so good. I got really connected to the characters, but it's a mix between The Bachelor, The Hunger Games. There's casts in the society, so like eight, you're the poor of the poor, and then it goes all the way to one, where one, you're royalty, and then there's ones in between. And America is in, I think she's in cast five. A bunch of girls get chosen to go to the palace and basically win over the prince and become the next queen. That whole thing, like literally like kind of like a bachelor, America goes, but she also has a boyfriend back home who's really poor. So she's kind of like deciding between the both of them, but then she's also deciding what she really wants. And like sometimes I would say that America got kind of like pick me, like she got really annoying. She was like really all in for one, but then like something stupid would happen and she'd like completely switch her, her mind. So that kind of got annoying, but it was still nonetheless so good. I highly recommend if you want like a quick little series to read, very entertaining. I really liked it. So I would definitely would recommend that one. Then I read Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So this one I feel like was the book of 2020. I mean, now it's still so popular and everyone's recommending it to everyone. This was another one where it was like such high expectations that they just didn't get met. I read this a two out of five. I did not like this book. Basically about this journalist who gets called in kind of by Evelyn Hugo, who's this huge Hollywood star. And she wants this journalist to write her final book about her life. She's very secretive. No one really knows about her life. So this is really big and really huge for her to come out with this, especially a rookie journalist. She's like, why are you choosing me? And she basically tells her her seven husbands, why she chose all these husbands and her one true love and really what happened with her life. It's by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I just, I read another one of her books and I don't think I really love her writing. I didn't get connected to the characters at all. And by the end of it, you understand why she chose this journalist to write it, but you don't really know too much about the journalist. Like I said, my last review of this book, but I just feel like when that part came, I just didn't really care. I mean, it's definitely a good storyline kind of twist, but the character wise, I wasn't connected to them at all. So I was just like, you know and then Evelyn it's basically about her life but still even though it was about her life I didn't love her as a character honestly it got kind of repetitive and I didn't really love her relationship I don't know I didn't really feel anything for any of the characters the one character I did love was Harry her best friend loved him but other than that not my favorite book I wouldn't recommend it The Hating Game so I read this on my Kindle a few weeks ago I rated this a 4 out of 5 Joshua and Lucy they work in the same cubicle they're kind of competing for the same job title very big enemy lovers they absolutely hate each other you can kind of tell there's kind of like a banter thing going on but they hate each other there's nothing really else to it there's just enemies to lovers that's just how it goes the beginning for me was just really really slow it took me a while to get into it but when i got into it it was so so good i would die for joshua i love him so much the end of it i was like crying it was so good i did rate it a four out of five just because the beginning was kind of slow for me but i would recommend this book with my whole heart like you need to read this if you like contemporary romances if you like enemies to lovers like this is the book for you it's also gonna be a movie soon with lucy hale and i forgot that guy's name i forgot but when i looked it up before i read it i saw that lucy hale and this guy was gonna be starring in it and i literally pictured them the whole time and they were like the perfect two people to play these characters <sighs> Such a good book, so you need to read it. Now we're gonna get to all of my Colleen Hoover books because those are so hyped on TikTok and for good reason, they're so good. I follow Colleen on Instagram and she was saying like, people are saying she's paying like PR people and people to really push out her books and stuff, but she's like, no, like I don't do that. Like she doesn't understand why they're so hyped, but I do, they are so good. She has this way of like creating such in-depth characters, but also an in-depth like storyline. All of that comes together. And then at the end of it, she always gives like this kind of like plot storyline kind of twist and you just don't see it coming like I always try to guess what she's gonna do at the end of the book and I never get it right so when it comes I'm just like either sobbing or just like shook like we'll get to it but when I read this one book I literally had to put it down and I was like I literally can't continue reading this until tomorrow like it was just so good so I have a few that I'm gonna talk about I'm sure you've heard of probably all of them we're gonna go through them really really quick the first one is obviously it ends with us so this one I do have the paperback but I let my friend read it so I don't have it with me this is the most popular one I'm sure you've either seen it or read it Lily's father just died she's trying to start new a new 
life. She's trying to just grow. And it kind of flashes back to her old relationship when she was kind of like in high school, I believe. His name was Atlas and then their kind of relationship, her family dynamic back then. And then it flashbacks to normal time. She meets this guy, Ryle, who's a neurosurgeon. Right off the bat, they have chemistry. They have a connection. So she kind of just goes in with that. Atlas comes back into the picture and things just change. She's trying to decide what she should do. Not between Ryle and Atlas, which I like. I like that it wasn't like, which boy should I pick? But it was more of her relationship with Ryle and things that happened and things that kind of remind her of her past and stuff like that. So it's very good. The way she speaks about what's going on is something that I'm not familiar with and the way she wrote about it kind of just made me more like knowledgeable and more aware of what's going on and how it is behind the scenes. So, 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 so good. Definitely check like the trigger sensitive stuff before reading it, but so good. I absolutely loved this book so much. It was the first Colleen Hoover book I read and that's where my downward Colleen spiral started. I rated that a four out of five. Actually, I think it was a four out of five because sometimes when I got to Atlas like flashback parts, I was kind of like waiting for Ryle's part to come back and I was kind of bored reading that because there was so much going on with Ryle and it was just so intriguing. So then Ugly Love so good this is one of my favorite like top carlene hoover books i liked this one better than it ends with us this was just one of my favorites so tate moves in with her brother his best friend miles lives across the hall and basically tate and miles end up having this kind of like friends with benefits relationship because miles has a past and it kind of flashbacks to that and you figure out why he has so much trauma because he tells tate like we're not gonna date like nothing's gonna like come from this you're not gonna know anything about my past we're not like gonna be anything in the future he basically just tells her that and she like agrees with it she's like fine but they have such a great connection so it's kind of like hard she doesn't really understand understand why he's like that he doesn't tell her but you as the reader figure it out because the flashbacks when this one part comes kind of at the end when you figure out his trauma and like what happened like why he won't date anyone else it's i was like crying it was so good it was so so good highly recommend this book i loved the ending i loved the way their characters kind of developed one of my favorite colleen hoover books literally ever so i definitely recommend this one then i have verity so this was i don't know if it's the only one or the only thriller colleen's ever written but it's the first thriller of hers that i read this one was so good you either like love this one or hate this one i feel like but for me i rated this literally a five out of five like it did nothing wrong to me it was so good i read this so quick because i was just like trying to figure out what happened and i love that with books like you can't put it down because you need to know what's happening next but basically verity is a very well-known writer but she got into an accident and she's like bedridden she can't speak she can't talk she's kind of like not brain dead but she's like nothing really works except for like her brain like she can't function normally anymore so her husband seeks out another author who's not popular at all like she's kind of like an underdog writer her name is lowen and he tells her they'll give her a shit ton of money to come to their house go through Verity's research and finish out the series that she's trying to finish because he thinks that they have a similar writing style stuff like that so she eventually agrees to it she goes very eerie because Verity can't speak or do anything and she's just really creepy like whenever she's in the same room as Lowen it's just really like creepy vibes Lowen goes into Verity's study and she finds a manuscript while going through her research and the manuscript is basically Verity's writing an autobiography about her life um starting from when she met her husband Jeremy and it's about her life and then her kids and what happens very very disturbing definitely and a trigger sensitive warnings check before this because it is so beyond disturbing to read but so good at the end there's kind of like a twist and you're kind of left on a cliffhang on a cliffhanger you're left not knowing basically what to believe at the end which was my favorite part i love when that happens you kind of have to figure it out on your own it was so good it literally blew my mind it was so good but it definitely has like some kind of creepy parts that were like very creepy but so worth it so good highly recommend that one i'm just gonna name the next books what i rated them and tell you if you should read them or not because i have three more one of them i'm gonna be talking about my what i read in august so that one you're gonna have to wait for my full review and then the other two i mentioned in my last book video maybe the last two book videos so just go there if you need a full full review so i have november 9th by colleen hopeless by colleen and heartbones by colleen november 9th four and a half out of five loved this book left me crying absolutely amazing you need to read this heartbones not my favorite favorite but it's very close to my heart it kind of have this like sad demeanor throughout it rated that a four out of five definitely the end was just perfect i was crying and it's just such a like lovely book i loved the way that one was written loved the characters in it very very good definitely read that one and then hopeless i just read recently read that one's five out of five it was slow in the beginning which i took off kind of like like i rated a four out of five on goodreads but if i really could in depth analyze this i would definitely give it a five out of five just for how much the ending and like the second half of the book made up for it so good 
that one put on top of your list read hopeless and read it now it's so good this was the book that i literally got to the part where things get really raw and i read it i put my book down i was in shock i closed my kindle i turned it off and i waited till the next day to really process what i read so good all right those are all of the books that i have that was a lot but book talk gives me so many book recommendations i have so many on my like to be read list from just specifically book talk they know what they're doing for the most part some of them are just way too hyped and you have to make sure that your expectations you don't have any going into a book or else it'll just be ruined but i want to do the reading vlog and the books that i have i'm not going to give any synopsis or anything about them i'm just going to read the books that i might want to read so let me know which one i should do song of achilles invisible life of Addie larue all your perfects by colleen hoover love and other words by christina lauren daisy jones and the six or where the crawdads sing six books i'll leave them in the description of what i might do for my reading vlog i haven't read any of those they're very popular very hyped so let me know i'm gonna put on my instagram story eventually but if you're here and you're listening let me know anyway so that's all that i have for today thank you for watching i hope you're enjoying my book videos if you are please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to see more from me in the future and i will see you guys hopefully in the next one